Every day, people pump almost 100 million tonnes of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, changing how the Earth naturally works. One idea to reduce the impact of this extra CO2 is carbon dioxide capture and storage, CCS. Here we take the CO2 we produce from our industries and pump it deep beneath the sea floor. So my name is Klaus Weilmann, I'm a marine geologist and now we're going to talk about carbon capture and storage. The first project that was um, implemented to store CO2 at industrial scale is Sleipna. Sleipna is the storage site in the uh, Norwegian sector of the North Sea and there since almost 20 years millions of tons of CO2 are being stored in the subsurface below the seabed um, on a regular basis. And that project was initiated basically by a tax regulation. In Norway, already 20 years ago, the government put very high taxes on CO2 emissions, and prompted by that, the oil and gas company Statoil decided to store the CO2 that they are separating from natural gas. And uh, the, the image that you can see there shows how the gas is being produced from about three kilometers depth, and then the, the CO2 is separated from the gas, and then re-injected at shallower depths in the sandstone formation. So the question that we look at is simply, is it going to leak the CO2 back into the ocean and into the atmosphere ultimately, or is it going to stay in that storage formation? And this seismic image here shows you a quite complicated story. So on the lower right corner, you see yellow and blue horizontal lines. And that's the CO2 that is stored there uh, in the Utsira Formation, about 20 million tons so far. You can look at it. And on top of that, there are horizontal lines in the seismic image, and these are the sediment layers that have been depo deposited there over geological time. It looks like a layer cake. But in that layer cake structure, there are also some other features. And these are the critical ones. So what you can also see to the left-hand side of the diagram is a vertical structure that we call a seismic chimney or pipe structure. And that structure was formed in the geological past many million years ago by natural gas leaking out of that formation. And you see some bright spots, yellow and bluish spots in that layer cake in the sedimentary overburden, and that's natural gas that found its way to the surface at some point in time. So what we learned from these geological data and geophysical observations is that there are actually pathways for CO2 leakage. So that's one possible risk at the storage sites. And there are lo lots of these seismic chimneys and pipe structures, hundreds and thousands of them only in the North Sea. The other risks are abandoned wells. So the oil and gas industry drills thousands and thousands of wells into the seabed to produce natural gas and oil to do exploration and production. And we looked at some of those wells, and what we found is that usually some gas leaks out. Typical emission rate in the order of about one ton per year of gas seeping out of these structures. This image shows you the seabed, some gas bubbles ascending from the seafloor, and also some whitish material at the seafloor. These are bacterial mats that feed on the methane that is being emitted there. So that's the other risk. So we have these vertical structures that were used for gas ascent in the geological past. We have this human-made structure of the wells. And finally, we made a totally unexpected discovery. And about 25 kilometers north to the storage site, we found a long, three kilometer long fracture in the seabed. That was a big surprise, because the geological setting there is not typical for this type of, this type of fractures. And all, moreover, this area has been studied in great detail by the industry since decades, and nobody ever described the structure. So it's long, th about three kilometers. It's about one to 10 meters wide. And you see there again this picture of the seafloor uh, where you have whitish material, again, these bacterial mats, and our roboter taking samples there. What we've learned so far is that fresh water comes out of that structure, also some natural gas, also some chemicals. And since this was so unexpected, we still really do not fully understand why this structure is there. So the big question is, is it natural? Is it related to some human activity? Is this a CO2 storage? Or is it rather maybe the oil and gas production in that area? So that's also typical at the seafloor, 
when you go out there, you want to assess some risks, you always discover something unexpected because we know so little about the seafloor. So our conclusion from all these studies is that it's quite possible that in the end, if we implement a lot of these storage sites at the seafloor, that some of the CO2 might leak out in the end. So if CO2 leaks, leaks out, what are the consequences for the marine ecosystems? That's our next question. And the basic effect is ocean, ocean acidification. So the CO2 that leaks out of these storage sites dissolves in bottom waters very rapidly, and then the water above the seafloor gets acidic. And that's a problem for many organisms living there, mostly those that are building carbonate shells. Uh, they have really a problem to cope with these low pH values or acidic conditions at the seafloor. We did a lot of studies at natural CO2 seeps, where CO2 from volcanic sources is being emitted at the seafloor. And we looked how the organisms respond to that. And the response is basically a strong loss in diversity at all levels, from microbes up to large animals. Only some specialists can survive in these areas. They can cope with the high CO2, but the others cannot. So that means the consequence of leakage would be that patches at the seafloor where the CO2 leaks out are going to be acidified and we are going to lose biological diversity at these spots at the seafloor. The next question is then, okay, um, how far will the CO2 actually rise? Is it going to go directly into the atmosphere or is it go, or, or, or going to stay in the ocean? And to answer that question, we did a release experiment at the seafloor where we released actually CO2 bubbles and monitored how rapidly they dissolve. And what we've learned from that is that under typical conditions at the seabed, the CO2 will not reach directly the atmosphere, but it will dissolve close to the seafloor. A few meters above the seafloor, everything is going to be dissolved, which is good for the atmosphere, but bad for the animals living there at the seafloor. Um, we also calculated and observed the footprint of CO2. So the leakage rate would be in the order of about one to 10 tons of CO2 per year. That's what we know from observations and modeling. And then we uh, modeled and also simulated in our experiment how large the footprint of that CO2 of that low pH area at the seafloor would be. So what is the size of the affected area at the seafloor for realistic emission rates? And this is shown here in this um, picture where you can see that the CO2 is actually forming a very narrow plume. Just we're talking there about maybe a maximum of 100 square meters at the seabed. So there will be impact on organisms, but it will be local. It will be small scale. Uh, we have a small footprint for that leaks. And that, the reason for that is that we are emitting CO2 there against a very high natural background. There is already a lot of CO2 in seawater, and that extra CO2 that we add if leakage occurs is rapidly dis dispersed and diluted by that water, which is already high in CO2. Uh, and because of that, and the rapid dis dis dispersion and, and bottom currents, the footprint where damage is done is small to very moderate. That's what we've learned from these studies. So then, in the end, so what is the risk? And what we conclude from all our studies so far is that, yes, leakage, leakage is actually possible. It may happen. But if it happens, the impact will be small to moderate because the footprint at the sea for where damage is done is small. So far, policymakers, also the general public, kind of tends to believe that it is very unlikely that leakage would ever occur and that if it would occur, the impact would be really critical. But uh, our studies show actually a very different profile for that risk of CO2 storage below the seabed. And then from an environmental perspective, so is it better to have a power plant a coal power plant, for example, with or without that technology? And there the answer is very clear. It's definitely better to equip coal power plant with CCS technology than rather to continue to emit that directly into the atmosphere. But then the question whether we should you know, do this specific technology or also renewables or even nuclear, that's another more complicated question. And I think the answer to that question will be very different in each country depending on local conditions.